Hello ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to be looking at making some cool line art in Photoshop. Uh, this is my first tutorial um, doing it this way, so apologies if I trip up along the way. And yeah, my voice sounds horrible, I'm aware of that. But let's move on and move forward. So, the first thing we're going to do, I've created my image here. I say created, I've found my image here, I've found a nice cityscape. Uh, what I'm going to do with this cityscape is I'm going to duplicate it. Two ways of doing that, I can press on the duplicate tool or I could simply press Ctrl and J on my keyboard. Ctrl and J. Now what you see is that I have made a duplicate layer. Okay, so my background layer is still locked and then I've got a duplicate layer on top. Now with this duplicate layer selected, I'm going to press and hold Ctrl and U. This brings up my hue and saturation levels. Now I want to fully saturate my image, so I'm going to change the saturation level all the way down to minus 100 and you'll see my image becomes fully saturated. Once I've done that, I shall press OK. Right, now we want to add some line art to it. So the way in which we do that is we're going to use a filter. So we come up to the top to filter, we press on filter gallery, we wait for that to load. Now what you're probably seeing is these list of options here, so you choose stylize and press on glowing edges and what you can see is that we've got these glowing edges here, now you might need to play around with the edge width and whatnot else, so you can see you get nice crisp clean edges, okay, so edge brightness, you're welcome to change these around as you see fit okay, so I'm quite happy with that, I think that looks quite nice, nice bit of line art there and press OK. So, so far, it's quite a nice piece of work. There's a lot more we can do to it just yet. So, we're over the course of this session, we're going to be learning that about blending options, opacity maps, cropping tools, layering, um, human saturation levels, and many other things. Okay, all things that you're going to use in different sessions. Uh, layer masks as well, that's quite an important one. So, now that I've got my image with the line art on it, I'm going to invert this. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to hold control and I'm going to press I. Okay, and you can see by pressing control and I, I have inverted my image. It's now time to add some level adjustment, um, some adjustment layers to it. My first one I'm going to use is a level adjustment. Okay, so I can't to here layer, and I want a new adjustment layer. Okay, new adjustment layer, and the first one I'm going to choose is levels. As we come up here, I'm going to leave it at levels 1, and I'm going to press OK. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this black arrow in ever so slightly, just to crisp the blackness off in there, and I'm going to move this in ever so slightly to the left, just to reduce some of the noise. OK, and once I'm happy with that, I'm going to add another new layer. So I'm going to come up to here, layer, again, new adjustment layer, but this time I'm going to go to threshold, which is right down the bottom here. Press OK, and I'm going to ramp this threshold up, just have a look at that, right, that thickens up the black lines, ramp it down, it lowers the black lines, OK, so something like, let's have a look, something like that, I quite like that, OK. Once I'm happy with that, so I've got nice thick black lines here, I'm going to change my opacity of this layer to 40%, now what that means is, this layer will only be 40% visible, OK. So I'm going to come here on the threshold layer, I'm going to press here, I'm going to ramp this down to 40%, okay, 40%, lovely, so it's only 40% visible. So now what I've got is I've got four layers that I've edited so far, but I only want to be working on one layer at once. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make what's called a stamp of this layer which means I'm going to record everything that's happened so far into one layer. The way I do this is simple, I press Control, Shift, Alt, and E. Okay, that's Control, Shift, Alt, and E. You press them all down at the same time. And that creates this whole new layer here. So what I can do now is I can turn one, two, three layers off, I can even turn this one off, and I've still got all of my work so far saved into one layer, that's all I want. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this layer and give it a multiply. Now what you'll notice is if I turn the background layer on, 
how nice does that look? That of interest, that looks very, very nice, okay? So there was our original image. There's a nice bit of line art, okay? But that's not the effect we're going for today. So I'm going to turn my background layer off. So I've changed my blending mode. I've changed it to multiply. And I'm working on one layer here, okay? Nice and straightforward. So I've hidden my old layers. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a new layer, okay? I've created my new layer by pressing on the create new layer tool here. And then I've moved this layer from above layer 2 to below it, okay? Quite straightforward. Now what I'd like to do is I want to fill this layer with a colour. So the way to do that is I'm going to choose a colour here in foreground colour in the bottom corner. I'm going to pick uh, like a yellow, press OK. Now I could just use the paint bucket to fill this layer, but the way I'm going to do it is another shortcut, which I know you all like. Hold Shift, press Backspace, up comes my fill box. Once my fill box comes up, use foreground colour, that's fine, because my foreground colour is yellow. I'm going to press OK. Woohoo! I've got a yellow background. Looks a bit like Only Fools and Horses. So, we're getting there with the image, OK? It's still quite a way to go yet, but we're getting there. So what I'm going to do now is I want to add a nice cloud to my background, OK? The way to do that is simple. I go File, Place, and I choose my picture of my clouds. We wait for that to load. And there it is, okay? My cloud layer is coming between the, the image layer up here and the color layer. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to resize this layer down. I'm going to make it whop in like that. Although, to be fair, the skyline only comes up to about there. So, as you can see between the buildings here. So what I'm going to do is I'll just make my clouds like that. Once you're happy with it, press Enter. And that will accept the proportions that you've set it up as, okay? So we're going to change this layer, the blending mode of this layer. I'm going to change that to an overlay. You can finally sort of see the clouds going on in the background there. Gentle, but you can still see them. Let's just have a look if we change it to multiply. Whoa. Okay, let's change it back to overlay. Nice, we're quite happy with that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, I don't need all the cloud area down here, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to get my eraser tool, which is this one here. And I'm going to choose myself a nice soft brush. So here's a soft brush, or here's a soft brush. I'm going to choose this one, because these have got crisp hard edges. These ones are nice and soft, you see, and they're blurred. So my hardness is set to zero. My brush size at the moment is 176 pixels. Let's see what that is. So I've clicked on my image, because my brush won't work, and it says, this smart object must be rasterized. So we know we've got to turn it into a raster graphic. Once I've clicked on it, just press OK, that's fine. So to get that up, I just clicked once on my image and it asked to convert it. I just pressed OK. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start rubbing out everywhere that the cloud intersects. I can be a little bit rough with it. It's not the end of the world if I warp over a little bit because the clouds are very subtle. So we'll just go around there like so rubbing that background out. You can't really see too much, okay? Very nice. So what I've done is I've rubbed the cloud image away so the clouds now don't intersect with the buildings. Okay, so we're nearly there as far as our picture is concerned. Now we've got quite a nice bit of line art already, some subtle clouds in the sky. Obviously you can make those a bit brighter if you wanted to by changing the opacity of the layer above or putting them above it and then start Warping them around, change the opacity. But we're quite happy with them as they are. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a new layer, another new layer, and I'm going to move this on top. So it's the very top layer. Layer 4 is the very top layer. Now I need to select all of these buildings around here because I want to fill them with a colour. Okay, And the way I'm going to do that is simple. I'm going to use a very quick and easy method. So if you click on the lasso tool up here, this is probably what you'll see if you click and hold on it. I'm going to choose the magnetic lasso tool. Now, the lasso tools will have different purposes, but I'm going to choose the magnetic lasso tool for now because it sticks to the lines it sees in the screen. It makes my life a bit easier. It doesn't matter too much if, I, if I'm a bit rough because I can correct it at the end. So what I do is I click and hold the mouse. and I don't let go. I just follow the shape all the way around. It doesn't matter. You can be more precise if you want. I'm just demonstrating the skills. But I'm still holding my mouse down, and you can see it applies the selection all the way around all of my buildings. OK, 
Okay, don't worry too much if it messes up. If you let go of the mouse, you're going to lose your selection. Okay. So what I need to do is draw all the way round. Now when I get to this end, I don't just stop. I need to keep drawing, so I'm just going to drag my mouse all the way around the outside of the screen. Don't worry that it hasn't perfectly drawn the edges up. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is let go of my mouse. You'll see if I hover over the beginning vertex where I very first started, you can see I get a little circle come up next to my tool, and that means close the spline. So what I do is I click once on my mouse, and you can see it changes my selection into like the marching ants, as they call that, around the outside. So that's my selection. Very nice. So I've made my selection, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this selection with a darker colour. So the way to do that is change my foreground colour, like I did before. I'm going to select sort of a subtle orange, okay, I don't want it to be too different, it doesn't really matter too much, so I just pick this orange, it's got that value there, RGB value is 2481810, nothing too special. So, like I did before, shift and backspace to fill it, I want the foreground colour, that's fine, press OK, and I've block filled that, that selection, okay, nothing too special about that. So what I'll do is I'll change my blending mode now, I'm going to change it to multiply, still a bit dark so I'm going to change my opacity down to say 40%. Okay, now I want to deselect this area, I don't want this area anymore because I can only work in this area, so to wait, the way to do that is press Control and D, that's no longer highlighted, and if I select my paintbrush tool with the same colour selected, I could just paint in those edges nice and easily that got missed out by my selection, okay, so anything that needs a bit more detail I can do there. So I've used two subtle colours, yellow and orange, just to sort of create a bit of a, a differentiation between the background and the foreground, nothing too exciting there, but we've already we've got a really nice piece of line art there. So a couple more steps that we're going to do just to, to finish this image off. I'm going to, again, I'm going to make a new adjustment layer, and this time I'm going to put a vibrance layer on it, okay, so I press vibrance, I'm going to ramp my vibrance level right up, I'm going to ramp my saturation level right up. Okay, if you didn't see what that does, if you click that on and off, you just notice it makes my colours a little bit more vibrant, so I can close that. So, that's quite dull. That just pops the colours out, but you can see a bit more of the blue in the sky, you can see a bit more of the orange in the buildings. I'll turn it off again, it's plain. There you go, pop that out a little bit, so it pops on the screen a little bit, very nice. Now there's one more thing to do, I want to add some textures on top to create sort of a grungy final finish, okay? Way to do that, again, File, Place, I'm going to just select Metal Texture 1, I'm going to place my image like so, press Enter, wow that's great, I can see nothing, I've got a metal texture, so I'm going to change my blending mode, change it to Overlay, Scratch that, I change it to multiply. And I'm going to change my opacity down to say 50%. Okay, so I've got that nice metal sort of grain in my texture at the moment, so it makes it a bit edgier. Once I've done that, I'm going to add my next metal texture that you'll find on Moodle, so metal 2. Obviously, you can find your own textures and your own background, but the same set of rules apply. It doesn't matter too much, you use the same tools, but obviously, the images can change. Yet again, I'm going to change it to multiply, change my opacity right down to 50, and last but not least, I'm going to place my final metal texture, okay, it's coming nice and small, whoops, it's coming nice and small, I'm just going to stretch out, obviously it's a big material, I found these on cgtextures.com, if you wanted to know where to find good textures, I'm going to change it to multiply, um, and press enter, happy days, okay, nice, nice and interesting, right, my top layer for some reason, my opacity didn't reduce, got a very nice picture there, if I wanted to change the brightness, obviously I could just come up here, adjustments, change my brightness, <coughs> or put a new brightness layer in, brightness and contrast, you don't have to do this, but I just wanted to make my image a little bit brighter, okay, Take the contrast down a little bit. And there we go, there we have it. Nice bit of line art, okay? So if you follow these simple steps, you should be able to create a nice line art using all the skills that we've used so far. Okay, thank you very much for following my tutorial. This is Giles Farmer. Goodbye. Thanks a lot.